I think it was about 11.30 at night. I get up very early to go to work, so I get in bed early. I was asleep. And I heard something like a train or Niagara Falls, something like that. And it just penetrated my consciousness and started to awaken me. And all of a sudden, there was this gigantic explosion. And that was the rear French doors of our house being blown open by the mud flow, the water flow, the you know, confluence of both. Uh, I came down the stairs, and uh, when I hit the floor, I was up to my knees in this ugh, disgusting, muddy, muddy, dense water. Uh, I came to the front of the house, and he was able to force open the French doors in the front, opening a flow so the water could come in the rear and out the front. So it was probably eight to 10 miles an hour going through the house, uh, which you know, must have been a, a hell of a sight from down below. I, I didn't see it, but uh, I saw off the top was the, you know, the water coming through the house and actually cascading over the deck. The shock was there was a community here which we knew of, I believe there's 10 homes that were, that were uh, buried. And it was just, what happened to this neighborhood? Gone. The slide came down, hit the bank, and all the trees and rocks actually flew and landed in this whole area here. And this is Love Creek. And uh, about where the telephone pole is, the debris was gathered up at least 20 feet of rocks and logs. And that's way up to that height. It was at that height right up here where the road takes the upgrade, that was the height of this whole thing. So we had to get over all these rocks to get up to where we had uh, victims and homes that came down through the slide. I wasn't really nervous about anything happening that night necessarily, but uh, Cindy, the lady who lived in this house, was nervous. And actually that night, she slept in the living room close to the exit of the house because she was afraid something was going to happen and had asked Paul to sleep in the living room with her because she felt that something bad was going to happen. And sure enough, she was right. I was aware of debris flows, the possibility of them happening, but you never think anything's ever going to happen to you or to someone that you know directly. Like something like this here, I mean, there was a small draw here that in 82 had a little slide, but nothing, you know, just a little bit of mud came down the hill. Never thought that the whole mountain, well, you know, the portion of the hillside was going to come through and wipe out your friend's house. Cindy, she's not really sure how she got out. She got thrown clear of the house somehow. And it's, it looks like, it looks like it went through a rock tumbler is what it looks like. Everything's just kind of mixed up and in a pile. Where's the guy going to be that's gone through, just gone through that? You just start moving stuff and calling out his name, hoping that hoping that you'll hear him say something and hoping you don't find him underneath something. You're hoping, you know, you. the whole time when I was moving stuff, I was hoping that he, he wasn't gonna be there. Just don't be under what I'm lifting up right now. And uh, luckily he wasn't, but unfortunately it didn't, it didn't matter. The damage was done to him. The San Francisco Bay Area actually is an ideal habitat for landslides, both shallow and deep. We have a combination of steep slopes, weak rocks, and very intense winter rainstorms. There are two different kinds of landslides in the Bay Area, debris flows and deep-seated slides. The debris flows are relatively small, they're shallow. Uh, they occur during periods of heavy rainfall, but they can occur quite suddenly and move very rapidly. And this rapid movement makes them very dangerous. They can not only destroy property, they can, they can actually kill them. The deep-seated landslides, on the other hand, are larger, deeper, and tend to occur more slowly and gradually and move more slowly. So they're much less dangerous to life and limb, but they can still cause an enormous amount of property damage. There are certain uh, geologic formations in the Bay Area that are notorious for uh, spawning uh, landslides. For example, in the East Bay Hills, you have the Orinda Formation. Uh, some of its uh, members are, all, are, are quite weak, uh, clay stones, and when they get wet, they can, they can begin to slide. On the San Francisco Peninsula, the serpentine areas or greenstone areas are notorious for, for, for deep-seated landslide. Here in the Santa Cruz Mountains in La Honda, uh, there's a very young uh, marine formation called the Parisma Formation, um, and it's quite weak, uh, relatively uncemented sands and fairly weak clays. 
In fact, you can snap off a big piece uh, relatively easy, like a big cookie. This is so unreal. I still can't believe it. My parents bought this house about five years ago. It's going to be retirement home. We repainted last year, put the green shutters on. The interior's been all fixed up, new floors. My mother's quite a garden. The whole area is garden. You can see what's left of the garden. It's just them. Um, she loves gardening. They put everything they have in this house. Uh, it's a $400,000 home. The insurance will pay $2,000 for moving expenses. But basically, that's it. The house will probably never be retrievable from this state. And they'll never be able to build on this lot again because this is no longer a probable slide area. This is a definite slide area. One geologist said it's a very slow moving slide, uh, that the house probably will not go down the hill or slide down the hill, but basically will continue to do this drop, lift, and slowly tear itself apart, where it'll actually collapse in on itself. And that seems to be paying out. Uh, if you notice Bill's house, that's exactly what it's doing. It's a very, there is a slow movement down the hill with Bill's, and there's a slow movement with my parents down the hill but it's like maybe an inch, two inches a day. It's mainly this drop and lift, which is the biggest motion that we've noticed. Uh, Deep-seated landslides can be very large. Uh, Deep-seated landslides can cover tens of square miles in some places. The landslide here uh, on Scenic uh, Drive in La Honda is a relatively small landslide by geologic standards, but it, of course it has tremendous impact on the people that live here. There are about 10 houses involved in one way or another, and a number of other houses uh, around the edges of the slide. But the, the slide is relatively small, maybe seven to 10 acres. The landslide is slowly moving downhill under the influence of gravity, like a thin slab sliding downhill. It's slipping on a weak plane at its base, which we've recognized about 25 to 30 feet below the surface of the slide. And it can move up to feet per day, potentially for months depending on the amount of water in the slide and the steepness of the slope. The body of the landslide is deforming internally as material slides down the hill. It rumples up like a rug. It breaks apart like the bread crust on top of a rising loaf of bread. And as it advances down slope, it starts to rise up and over the pre-existing landscape. The anxiety is, I guess, where will it stop and when will it stop? When the slide began to happen, uh, the fissure had, had not uh, crossed over this empty lot yet. And uh, people's houses were beginning to slide. And then day by day, we would watch, watch that fissure coming across the lot, um, probably a few inches at a time. And we didn't know where it was going to stop, if it was going to come and hit the garage, or we just had no idea. And then it disappeared behind this big debris of wood pile over there. And, uh, never came out the other side. <laughs> I like to be optimistic about it. I'm here every day with, with the baby, so I'm reminded of it as I look out every day on it. Dan's off to work, so I try not to think about it and just go about my day-to-day -day life. And uh, But you look up and you just see you know, the houses boarded up and the people working out there, and uh, you, you feel lifelessness of that area now where, where all the people are gone. We want our neighbors back. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just it's, it's just sad to see that see what the our our friends and neighbors have, have uh, gone through this. We have friends um, um, see, I'm recent relatively recently married and my wife grew up here in the Bay Area. She has a lot of very close friends in the Bay Area. So uh, we set up housekeeping in, in a bedroom, living out of a suitcase in, in their house. And um, well, we'll, we'll be able to make it. We're very lucky. We got our stuff out. Our animals weren't injured or hurt or, or no one was killed. And uh, our, our problem is a financial one, pretty much. It's just a financial one. And we'll be able to figure that out one way or another. The slide is, is moving relentlessly. A mass like this, once it gets on the move, it takes a whole lot of energy to stop it. This property, my lot, I don't think can be stabilized without stabilizing the entire slide. And uh, 
And I don't know whether collectively if all the homes were even worth the cost of attempting to stabilize the slide. I guess homeowners have to be aware of, of where their house is. Uh, uniform code for building has to be robust enough and so that things like this, so houses won't be built on land that, that is likely to move. People who buy in a slide area, they need to understand more than just the probability that they may be in a slide area. They need to be told that in unusual rain situations that a house, no matter how well constructed, no matter how modern, no matter what kind of techniques they did to build a foundation, still has a real potential for this kind of development.